Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Winston's Weekly, covering all things property. I'm Paul Sanger, your host for today's property chat. Winston, welcome back. Thank you. Now, Winston, as we usually do, let's start with rates and inflation and data movements in the US markets. You know, this week we saw the FOMC minutes released, which spooked the market a, a little on Wednesday, as it was clear from the minutes that the FOMC board remains concerned with the stubbornness of, of, of inflation. Uh, maybe we want to start there? Well, following on from that, um, last night in, in the US, um, a couple of uh, data points came out, which also continued to spook the market. Uh, the PMI, which is the Purchasing Managers Index, came in at uh, 54.8, I think it was, uh, against expectations of it being around 51. Um, so it's just showing that the economy is quite strong. Yep. Um, and on, on the basis of that, uh, people have taken the view that, once again, um, expectations are to push out uh, rate cuts further down the track than, than they were. Uh, in addition to that, uh, elsewhere in, in, in the UK, uh, a couple of nights ago, um, the CPI came out and uh, it came in at 2.3% uh, uh, up for the month uh, and the market was expecting 21 And again, um, uh, investors took the view that they were expecting rate cuts in the next month or two. That's been pushed out as well. So it's not just happening in, in, in the US, it's also happening uh, in Europe. So what we've seen with that is the 10-year bond rate in the US is now 4.45, uh, uh, getting close to that 4.5%, uh, which seems to be the the, the, the place where, where it sort of comes down again. Um, so there are some concerns that maybe this time it'll go through that 45 and keep going up. Um, so so there, there are concerns about the, the direction of interest rates here in, in the short term. And just with regards to the, the, the UK, because I think people expected them to, to, yeah. to cut first, probably in, yeah. in, in the June, July. Now, yeah. obviously this week, the UK have, have announced an election. Yeah. Would that have also had an impact? They don't want to have, you know, have a rate cut Correct. right, right Correct. around the election Correct. time? Yeah, that, that, again, uh, implies that there's likely to be no change, certainly for the next six weeks, which is the, the, the term of the, uh, um, the election um, preamble sort yeah. of thing. And also, it's clear to say that you know, the, the, in Europe and UK, the economies are nowhere near as strong as the US. They have to cut rates. You know, they, they don't yeah. have the growth that yeah. the US uh, markets have, yeah? Correct, correct. Yeah. No, absolutely. And if you extrapolate that to a similar situation in Australia, where uh, after the RBA released its, uh, uh, its notes for, for the last meeting, expectations uh, and discussions were about raising rates rather than cutting rates. Yeah. So we've got a similar situation here. So let's turn our attention to uh, domestic markets. What is the market focusing on in terms of the property sector? What are the key discussions taking place with property fund managers, trends or directions in the, in the property space? Well, again, it's this focus on um, interest rates uh, and, and inflation. Interestingly enough, uh, in May, the sector about two weeks ago was actually up, the, the A-REIT sector was up 6.1%. Uh, Gradually, over the last uh, 10 days or so, it's been sort of coming back a bit. It's now only up about three and a half, and I suspect with what's going to happen today, with the market expected to be down in general about 1%, that the REITs will continue to suffer. I should also add, just getting back to the US, that Starwood Income REIT, which is one of the largest uh, income REITs in the US, uh, they've actually uh, changed or, or, or reduced uh, expectations in terms of redemptions. They were having, um, up until yesterday, uh, they were allowing 2% uh, of NAV redemptions uh, per month. They've cut that back to 0.33 in the first percent. In the first four months, they've already paid out $750 million. Uh -huh. They've only got about 740 odd million left in liquidity. Uh, and what they're saying is they don't want to put pressure on uh, the rest of, of, of the holdings that they have to sell them yep. has had an impact on everybody. So they've cut redemptions as well. So we're seeing that a, a, a little bit more prominent in, in recent times. And just going off tack a little, little bit uh, regard to you know, the geopolitical situation, and particularly overnight with, uh, with, with China sort of yep. flexing its muscle with, with Taiwan. How does the REIT sector react to kind of those geopolitical events? Uh, well, the REIT sector in Australia, Australia is seen as, as a safe haven, yeah. so it should be benefit, benefiting from, from, from these sorts of things that are going on, the geopolitical risks. But, but the reality is that 
for it to benefit properly, you have to have a flow of cash coming in, okay. and uh, uh, particularly for, from offshore. It is seen as a safe haven, but because of concerns about where rates are going and where valuations are, um, it, it's, it's not really uh, uh, exposing itself in, 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 in reality. Kind of cancels, yeah. Yeah, cancels each other out. Okay, yeah. that's a very interesting. Mm. And lo looking forward to next week, what should we be expecting on the property front, and is there any material news expected? No, there's re really uh, no material news. Um, we're getting close now. We're only a week to go to the end of the month, and then we're into June, um, uh, and then uh, the REITs will go to, into uh, blackout because of results periods and so on. Um, the positive thing, in a way, is at the end of June, they're going to be full of distributions. Yeah. So, so to some extent, people will hang on to, to stocks before that. So we really won't know what's going to happen to the REIT sector overall until after June, if people say get their distributions and then and then sell out. Uh, there was one positive uh, uh, note this week. Dexas Industrial REIT uh, came out with a slight upgrade. Um, and we saw the stock improve a little bit. Um, we have seen a couple m m uh, of REITs uh, announce yep. uh, updates. They've been in line with expectations or a little bit above, but it's not enough to sort of push things much further. And so what you're saying there is really, is people aren't going to make any major changes within the sector during June, but obviously post the end of the financial year, July is probably something which we have on our radar, yeah. where people will be looking at the rate situation, make their views, and we should see some shuffling around for some of the big funds, yeah? Yeah, basically that's correct. There you go. All right. <laughs> Winston, as always, thanks for your time and insights today. We'll be back next Friday with another Winston's Weekly. Thanks for listening. Thank you.